box. It's time for Click Millionaire's Office Hours. Today we're going to talk about strategy for your startup or for your small business, how that small business can grow more traffic, attract more customers, make more sales, and help you uh, well grow up to be who you really wanted to be back when you were a kid. That's the goal of the ClickMillionaires.com forum. The books I write, uh, the podcasts I post, the videos on my YouTube channel, and all the things that I do here to try to help you uh, become the click millionaire that I know is lurking there inside you. So today we're going to talk about uh, a bunch of questions that have come in from folks all over the world uh, who've been participating at clickmillionaires.com or emailing me or members from our masterminds forum. That's a private forum uh, that I work with personally to help people find their click millionaire niches. And today we're going to go through a bunch of those and have some fun. And if you'd like to join us, well, we're live on YouTube on uh, Google Plus, and if you're listening later during the podcast recording of this, perhaps on iTunes or Blog Talk Radio or any of the other places this is syndicated, well, welcome to you too. I'm Scott Fox. I'm the author of uh, several best-selling books about internet marketing and how to build your own lifestyle business on the internet. Uh, I started out with Internet Ridges uh, almost 10 almost 10 years ago now. Wow, yeah, that's right. Uh, back when uh, the internet was still a big, green, empty field for a lot of people. And then uh, followed that up with eRiches 2.0, which is an online marketing book about how to use social media marketing. And then uh, the most recent one, of course, is the one uh, that's hit the biggest, Click Millionaires, Work Less, Live More, with an internet lifestyle business you love. So today we're going to be emphasizing that theme, finding an internet lifestyle business of your own that you can love that also makes you some money. And my goal and my promise to you is not necessarily to make you a millionaire on a cash basis. In fact, I think money is way overrated. Uh, one of the quotes from the book, in fact, is something like, I said it better in the book because I had an editor, but it was something like, money isn't the destination in your life. In your life. It's just the uh, gas for the journey. In other words, you can make as much money as you'd like. And I've made lots of money. I've made so much money that I give the profits from my books to charity, for example. Um, but I think that money is overrated as an end in of itself. What you're really after is a life that you can enjoy. And, of course, that takes a certain amount of money. I'm not poor. <laughs> I don't recommend that you be poor either if you can help it. But an in-between approach of building a business for yourself that allows you to be who you want to be, when you want to be that person, to wear what you want and eat what you want and arrange your schedule like you want, and most importantly, have creative input to what you want to do with your life. Well, that's what being a click millionaire is about. It's living like a millionaire using the clicks of the internet to power a new lifestyle business just for you. So today we're going to talk about a bunch of stuff. Let's preview this a little bit. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Let's see. we got some questions about search engine optimization and uh, link back strategies. Um, about uh, bounce rates and how to improve the bounce rate on your website, email collection, list building. We've got a website that somebody wants me to come in and critique. Uh, LaVon has submitted her website. And we'll take a look at the latest hot topics over in the Masterminds Forum. Uh, I've got an update for you on Google's free mobile testing tools and the uh, need for you to pay attention to the mobile uh, universe that uh, Google is now enforcing on all of us. And let's see, uh, some about podcasting and, and a whole bunch more, including an inspiring quote to wrap up the end of the show with at the end of our hour together. So thanks for being here. If you are with me live, come on into the chat room and you can click, let's see, if you're on Google Plus and you roll your mouse over that way, you know, probably that way for you. At the top, there's a blue icon with some little white lines in it. If you click in there, then a chat room will pop up on the other side. <laughs> and you can type in their questions for me live. Or if you've got your webcam on, you can come in live and join me here uh, to particip excuse me, participate face-to-face. -face, and that would be a lot of fun, too. All right, so today let's talk about, well, let's get started with our questions, all right? I can see folks coming in from around the world. And welcome to you. Thanks for joining me. Let's talk about our first question here. No fluff here. Let's get right to it. This is from my good friend Jeffrey. Jeffrey is one of our most frequent uh, commenters and questioners. Now, Jeffrey's a member of the Masterminds Forum, but he's also found it useful to get him some extra licks <laughs> by asking me questions for these uh, sessions, and I uh, appreciate that, Jeffrey. It's good to hear from you. So let's talk about your question about search engine optimization. Now, the quick uh, background of this, of course, search engine optimization, for those of you who are new, is the idea that you arrange your website and do your marketing so that your site shows up higher in the search engine results on Google, for example, or Yahoo or Bing or whatever search engine you might use. So the game is to optimize your activity online so that when people are looking for topics or products like yours, you come up in the search results 
right near the top. That's called search engine optimization or SEO. So Jeffrey's asking, Scott, from your experience, what would you say is the most crucial aspect of SEO in getting your site to rank high in Google? From the research I've done, it seems that getting authoritative sites to link back to your site would be the biggest boost to your SEO rank. Would you agree or disagree? What are your thoughts? Thanks, Jeff. Okay, Jeff, well, great question, and well, let's talk about this a little bit, and um, I do have some thoughts for you that I think might be a little bit eye-opening and hopefully helpful. Uh, first of all, I think it's interesting, and everybody listening should know, Jeffrey referred to ranking high in Google. Google is the game here. You got to be a little bit careful about search engine optimization consultants. There's a lot of consultants out there who want to help you, quote unquote, help you, which means really sell you something to help you with your search engine optimization. Most of that is crap. All right. A lot of this you can do yourself. Uh, we talk about this a lot in the forum, and I'd encourage you to join the forum if you haven't already especially the masterminds forum. We talk about this in detail, uh, how you can do this yourself. It does not require a monthly retainer to some guy you never met who does things you don't understand to a website to help you improve your traffic. That's not the game. Uh, and I am pointing out that Jeffrey mentioned Google because Google is pretty much the only game left. Uh, Yahoo and Bing still certainly big and active search engines. Uh, Ask Jeeves faded away along with Alta Vista and all kinds of other ones. But Google is the one that sets the pace for all the other search engines. So you really can pretty much focus on Google when you're doing your search engine optimization. Sometimes there are opportunities uh, if Bing or Yahoo treats things a little differently, you might find a little boost in traffic by adjusting for them. But in most cases, Jeff's on the right track here by focusing on Google. Okay, so his, his theory uh, from his research is that getting authoritative sites to link back to your site could be the biggest boost to your SEO rank. I would, my choices are agree or disagree, I would agree. Uh, authoritative sites linking back to your website is actually what Google was based on. The real breakthrough that started Google, let me talk about this for a minute because if you're new to search engine optimization, it seems like this very strange black box. But it really comes down to the recognition that Larry Page had, Larry, one of the co-founders of Google, and he invented what's called the page rank algorithm. And it's a pun because he's Larry Page, but they're also talking about web pages. And their idea was uh, 15, more than 15 years ago now, how are we going to deliver results when there's a million pages about uh, used cars or you know how to put a diaper on a baby or any of that stuff? All of those things have... Um, thousands and thousands of web pages, right? So how do you pick the best one? Well, his idea was that each other site on the web that links to a site is like a vote. And that page ranking algorithm means that he calculated all the other sites on the internet and found the one that linked to, had the most links about used cars and made that site the best used car a website to rank first in the search result pages on Google. So that's the game. That's their fundamental breakthrough is that they figured out that the web is pretty much a democracy. Now these days they've evolved a lot since then. It's been on many years with hundreds of very talented engineers uh, and they have hundreds of ranking signals in the algorithm at Google now. And the only people who really know what they all are are the people that work at Google. That's their secret sauce, right? But links remain the number one thing that you can do. If you want your website to show up high, uh, links from other sites are great. The qualification that Jeffrey added there is authoritative sites. So if your website is about used cars, having a bunch of links from uh, personal trainers or uh, dentists or um, you know lawn furniture websites isn't necessarily going to help you. You want relevant authoritative sites. One good link from a really important, popular, well-recognized site can be worth many smaller links from uh, sites that aren't as authoritative in that field. Now, here's what I would add. Um, so I do agree, authoritative sites are what you want to link to you, and that can make a huge boost to your search engine ranking traffic. Good. It can also, of course, help with the people. <laughs> the search engines are not the whole game on the Internet. Um, they are not necessarily a leading indicator. They're a lagging indicator. So if you put up a website and it's tremendously popular with millions of people and they all start going there, that could be ahead of the rankings in Google. Of course, Google's job is trying to catch up as quickly as possible, and if all those people are coming to your site, they're probably going to start uh, chatting about it online and linking to it and blogging about it, and those links will show up. So the two go hand in hand pretty quickly. But people in search engines are slightly different audiences. Now here's the piece I would add that's new. The word I said a couple times there, it just kind of snuck in naturally, is relevance. So Jeffrey, what I would qualify 
you said the number one thing is getting authoritative sites to link back to your site. Yes, but that's a tactic. That's a specific, and it's true. But the overarching strategy above that, it's, I just think this is good to understand. What Google really wants and what every person who's on the Internet wants is not to find the site with the most links to it. They want to find the site that answers their question the best, and that's what they call relevance. So all those other sites linking to you are votes toward your site being relevant. So as important as the links are, and they are, and I would, I would spend time on getting more links, the overarching strategy here is important to understand. What you really want to do is have the best site you can. And it's not even the whole site. It's per page, per question, or per topic. So if someone goes on the Internet and says, how do I stop my uh, golden lab from eating disorders? Well, that's a very specific topic. You might have a great big site about dog training, but that's a specific question, and that specific question is going to go and show up as um, an answer to someone's um, specific question. And if your page is the one that answers that question the best, it's the most relevant. And that's what they're after, the relevance factor, okay? So the links are just a means to that end. Anything you can do to make your site the most relevant to the user's questions is what is going to drive Google to rank your site higher because they're in the service business. You're not the customer. The customer for them is really the person who's typing in that search query. So the more relevant you are to more specific questions on more pages, the better you'll rank. And I would, and just to finish this thought, is I would think of your site overall, Jeff and everybody else listening, it's not just about making your site rank well. It's about the individual sections and pages of your site ranking well for individual types of problems and questions and uh, products and solutions that people are looking for. Think of your site as a bunch of little front doors that can be ranked in Google separately. So if you have a thousand pages on your website, you've got a thousand different things that could rank in Google. Now, I know that sounds overwhelming, uh, but if you do that with a bunch of your pages, the whole site will start to rank well. And that is actually more effective in tackling niche product sales than trying to rank the whole site for a broader topic. If you try to rank a brand new site for baby care in general, there's lots of sites out there already doing baby care well. You're probably better off being the most relevant, most authoritative, best answer to 10 specific questions that are very popular in baby care and are not well addressed by existing competitors. So I hope that makes sense um, because that's really the game these days. And it's easy to get caught up in your site as a whole when that's not really as relevant as the collection of individual topics that you address well and become authoritative on for those topics. All right, so there you go. There's a lecture on SEO. Of course, there's a lot more <laughs> to be said, but that's the concept. And, and this is the same way I, I went through grad school myself back at Stanford, was you can learn the specifics, and that's good, but if you understand the theory, the big picture, the specifics start to make sense on their own, right? So if you understand overall that you want to be the most relevant on these topics, you'll figure out what's right and what's wrong. When different people, you read different blog articles, you should do this, you should do that. Some SEO salesman calls you and says you should do this, you should do that. If you understand the big picture, you can ask the right question. How does this make my site more relevant to my target customers? That's the key to all this stuff, and that's what makes SEO um, the most important game in town. Uh, even more than the links itself, it's the relevance. Okay, so relevance, relevance, relevance. All right, so there we go. So we're off and running. This is uh, Video Office Hours, or uh, also known as uh, Click Millionaire's Strategy Coaching Sessions. Uh, and I'm here, Scott Fox, to help you, as I am every month, um, as a free session. We do twice as many of these, or even more, in our masterminds forum, so if that's interesting to you, to work with me directly, or with our other, uh, we've got a whole community of people from around the world, I would head over to mastermindsforum.net, mastermindsforum.net, there's a free trial there for you. you go to mastermindsforum.com, you can do that too, but that's not a free trial. <laughs> so if you want a free trial, head over to mastermindsforum.net, and I'd be happy to work with you directly. Okay, up next we've got uh, our good friend Daniel, who has uh, been very active lately on the site and sending me a lot of questions. So Daniel, I think you're even with us today. So um, let's talk about some of the questions that you submitted. So um, one was about, let's see, we've got a couple of them here. So let's see which one we should do first. And then we'll do a website review together also, folks, so stay tuned. Let's try, okay, bounce rate. So Daniel says, hey, Scott. I'm curious to know if you could answer a question about bounce rate. 
Mine is about 75%, and I'm worried that people are getting turned off by my email collector pop-up, similar to what you have on Click Millionaires and that you emphatically recommend. Any thoughts on that would be awesome. Thank you kindly. Looking forward to the show. Okay, if Daniel, yes, bounce rate. So if bounce rate's a new concept to you, it's pretty straightforward. The idea is um, 100 people visit your website, and 75 of them leave pretty much immediately. You have a 75% bounce rate. They came, they bounced away. They took a look, decided it wasn't for them, and split. So that's a bounce rate. A bounce rate is simply people coming and deciding not to stay and leaving. So you want your bounce rate to be as low as possible so that when people come, they don't bounce. <laughs> they, they come to the website and they go, ah, this is what I was looking for. And um, now I will stay here and I will read this stuff and I will sign up for the email and I will buy the stuff that's for sale or whatever actions it is that you're trying to convince them to take. So a lower bounce rate is good. Um, this is like golf, I guess. <laughs> so, so let's talk about Daniel. Um, first of all, you have a 75% bounce rate. Yes, that does sound high to me. Um, that is something you would like to lower, obviously. Uh, I would say uh, you would want it to be less than 50%. Uh, there's no hard and fast rule for this, but 75% is high, and clearly um, this is reflecting a slight mismatch between your marketing and what people are seeing when they arrive. So let's, uh, let's address this more specifically. So first, your question is, uh, they're getting turned off by my email collector pop-up. Yes, sure could be. Uh, Pop-up windows are something we all hate. Um, unfortunately, they work. <laughs> so uh, that's why you use them. That's why I use them. That's why so many websites use them. Uh, the only real way to figure out whether your pop-up is making all this difference is to turn it off. You've got to test it on and test it off. Uh, and then when you turn it on again, you can test things like uh, the color, the messaging, the size of the buttons, how much information you're asking for. Um, or a good one is the delay when someone arrives, like how long does it wait until the pop-up shows up? Does it show up immediately? Does it show up five seconds later, 50 seconds later, five minutes later? Does it show up every time they come? Does it only show up every third time? Or, or once is the only time they ever see it? All these are things you can play with, and I don't have a good answer for you other than to test it. Uh, all those things are manipulatable if you'd like to configure your pop-up in different ways. Um, and that's the only real way to know um, I would suggest uh, more specifically there's a service called Unbounce, uh, Unbounce, and uh, you can Google that, Unbounce, and they will um, help you do A, B testing, which is what this is called. There's an A version and a B version, and, and it shows them for you to different people, and you can see which one people react to better, and they'll give you objective numbers saying, you know, this one had a 75% bounce rate, but this one uh, only had a 47% bounce rate or whatever it is. And then you can say, ah, so the, you know, that was because I changed the color. Now I'll change the text or I'll uh, make a different offer of a free ebook or something. And you can use a service like Unbounce or many others. If you Google the phrase A-B testing, you can find a number of these services and that might be helpful to you. Um, to continue that, that's the answer. Now to help try to add a little more value here, you probably knew a lot of that. Um, uh, let's talk a little bit about what I refer to as a mismatch in your marketing. If you have a bounce rate of 75%, it could be something uh, infrastructure, sort of structural, like a pop-up is popping up immediately and it's coming too fast and it's ugly or whatever, and people just got here and they say, no, I don't need this, I'm out of here, right? And they're just gone. It could be structural like that. Just as likely, or perhaps even more likely, is that you've done some marketing, you're, uh, you've got some blog posts out there, or guest guest blog posts, or uh, some you're buying ads on uh, Twitter or Facebook or something, or or whatever it is, and people are coming and they're arriving and they're leaving because they don't like what they see. And that doesn't mean what you're doing is wrong or bad. It means more that it doesn't match what they expected. Now, if you ever work with Google AdWords, um, Google will force you into a pretty rigorous uh, calculus with um, relevance, we're back to the relevance we were talking about in our first question with Jeff, um, but they really need you to match the expectations of your arrivals. So if you, if all your marketing says, uh, just as a silly example, uh, click here to get a free $10 off coupon, and then they come to your site and there's no $10 off coupon, well, you're going to get like a 95% bounce rate, right? Because the other 5% are going to just hunt and hunt and hunt until they find it, but they're still not happy either, right? So if there's a mismatch that broad, it, that would be easily, 
that could easily lead to a 75% bounce rate. So Daniel, I would look at what you're doing. Where are these people coming from? And what's the message that you're providing them? If you're saying, come over here for this, and then they get there, and this isn't immediately obvious, that's probably your problem. Um, you need to match those a little more specifically. In fact, you might even think about um, having specific landing pages. Because a website, as we talked about in the first issue with uh, SEO, isn't really uh, one thing. A website is a collection of pages. And if you're doing all your marketing only to your home page, you're missing an opportunity. Because then you're taking, your home page can only have so much messaging, right? You've got about this much space and a you know, certain number of lines of text and some pictures. And you've done all kinds of marketing in all different places over many months or years. And if you drive everybody to that one place, well, of course it's not going to match all those different contexts and messages that you've spread around the Internet. You may be better off creating separate landing pages so that when you say, hey, there's a free $10 off coupon, well, that goes to a different URL on your site where there's a $10 off coupon. Or another one that says get a free ebook, well, that goes directly to a page that says free ebook right here. Or if there's another one that says come see this and that sort of product or I've got this for you or check out this blog post, each of those marketing pieces links specifically to a designated landing page that matches the expectations you have set in your marketing. Because if you do that, you set an expectation, the person goes, oh, oh, I, oh, I could get this if I click, and then they click, and they get it, guess what happens? They're not going to bounce, <laughs> right? So your 75% will drop dramatically if you can match the expectations uh, that are set by your marketing with the uh, information conveyed on your landing page. So um, a lot of people make the mistake of trying to drive everything to their homepage, but the homepage itself usually accounts for you know, this varies a lot, but usually less than 50% of the arrivals of new people visiting a website, at least in my cases, it's, it's usually 40% or even less because you've got a lot, if, you, if your site's been up for a while, especially if you're doing a blog or a forum or something that creates lots of content, those people can find you from any number of places. So each of those has different expectations when they arrive, and you might want different landing pages to address, you know, you don't need to kill yourself about this, but, you know, think of the whatever, five top topics or ten at most, and try to target your content and landing pages toward those top queries or those top product needs or solutions or whatever it is you're selling um, and match those expectations. You'll see your bounce rate drop dramatically um, because you have matched the expectations of the arrivals. And that means not always using your same homepage URL when you're out there marketing uh, and posting things around the Internet or buying ads and so forth. All right. So I hope that makes sense. That was a little bit of a dissertation there. But I think that's an important point to understand. Your website is more than just one landing page. It's every page could be a landing page. And if you optimize for those different use cases when people arrive, your bounce rate will drop a lot. All right, so there we go. That was a uh, crash course in uh, unbouncing, as they say. <laughs> All right, so let's mix it up a little. If you're just joining us, I'm Scott Fox, and you're listening to Click Millionaires Office Hours. This is our latest uh, hangout strategy session for entrepreneurs and small business owners. I'm here to help you try to make more online and make yourself a better person, have a little more fun, and build that lifestyle business you've been looking for. So if that sounds good to you, I encourage you to come over to our Masterminds Forum. Mastermindsforum.net has a free trial, and you can work directly with me and the other folks from our friendly forum um, from all over the world, in fact, mastermindsforum.net. Let's take a look next at a website. Let's do a website review. Our friend Levon, and if you're watching, by the way, and you want to come in and add a question, you could do that in the chat room. Um, if you're watching live on YouTube, for example, or over on clickmillionaires.com, the uh, chat room is open, and you can pop in a question there if you'd like to join me live. Let's see here. Now, let's try... Um, find our friend Lavon's website. Um, I'm going to do a screen share here. Now, Lavon's site is called resolveyourbackpain.com. Can you guess what that's about? <laughs> Let's see here. Hold on. i got to get this set. There it is. And resolveyourbackpain.com. Not that one, that one, that one. And here we go. Okay. You guys see that? Yes, you can. There we go. Okay, so so Levon is a new member over at ClickMillionaires.com, and she says, Hi, Scott. My name's Levon. I have all your books. Thanks for that, Levon. And I'm getting tremendous ideas from my website. 
but I have just started and I would like you to critique it so I maintain myself on the right road to success. Thanks in advance. Here's the link for the website, www.resolveyourbackpain.com. And here we go, resolve your back pain. Well, look at this guy. I see some back pain there. So what can we do to help LaVon get this website uh, headed in the right direction? Okay, well, um, LaVon, obviously, I think you probably know I have a service where I do this for real and in depth at expertwebsitereviews.com. That's expertwebsitereviews.com. And I'd be happy to do a 20-minute plus video for anybody that's interested in this kind of critique, but we do them for free during these office hour sessions. So let's talk about uh, this for LaVon here and the rest of you. Head over to expertwebsitereviews.com if you'd like a similar critique here. All right, so first of all, the, uh, the URL will resolve your backpain.com. I'd say it's pretty good, pretty descriptive. You're very clear about what the site is about in terms of your messaging and your branding. I think that's a great start. Uh, the uh, logo here, what I obviously is missing here is you're not repeating the name. We've got a big blank space here. So from a design point of view, you could use your space a little better. Um, I would suggest that if this is your logo, and that's not a bad logo, uh, maybe include the words there so that if someone, this is again, this is about expectations like we were just talking about a minute ago. If you've been out marketing on the web and somebody clicks on something that says resolveyourbackpain.com, it would be great if it said right here, welcome to resolveyourbackpain.com. <laughs> just so you know that matching the expectations puts people at ease, right? Uh, just like if you walk into a grocery and suddenly it turns out there's no groceries inside, there's a bunch of shoes, what would you do? you'd bounce, you'd leave. So you want to make sure you match the expectations of your audience. And I would start by uh, creating a little bit bigger logo here uh, that includes your name. All right, next. Uh, so you found some great stock photos here. Uh, obviously, you're going to have to do more than put up these huge stock photos, right? Let's figure out what you want to do, LeVon. What is it you're going to do in terms of making money? How are you going to monetize this? Uh, you have some... Um, uh, let's see, this is a sort of blog sort of thing. You've again found some good back pain blog, uh, uh, sorry, uh, back pain blog posts. And uh, here's a list of your previous posts. Uh, free gift, that's a good idea. That gets people, uh, yeah, okay. And then uh, more, humor of the day, cart, vision statement, okay. All right, so now we've taken a quick look at this. This search bar appeared that wasn't out on the main page. It was. I don't think that was there when I arrived, though, was it? Perhaps. Okay. So what are we going to do with this? Well, so let's surface this. It's focused on you. Good, good. Okay, I get that. But what do you want me to do? What is it you want people to do, Levon? I know this is new, so we're just we're just spitballing here. But you got to tell people what you expect of them, what they can get out of this. You need to put up um, some paths, some suggested activities for them. So usually the suggested activities are something like, Sign up here for my email list. In this case, you could you could surface this free gift thing, right? Um, this is way too big. You can consolidate this, but um, I'm not sure what your your free gift is. But you should probably be a little more specific about that. Um, I would question these uh, these cartoons are cute. I don't know if you really have the rights for those, though. So be careful uh, when you're posting things like that if you don't have the rights. Uh, if those aren't licensed from a stock photo house or something, for example. But you need out here. I, I usually talk about a hierarchy. Uh, first would be um, get their email address, and that should deserve some significant space up here. Second would be perhaps uh, buy something or uh, read my blog or uh, share this out in social media to help you drive your marketing message. That's what I would think about. Each of these photos is great, but you need to do a little more explanation because a visitor arrives, you need to set the tone, right? They've come to your party. What kind of party is this? You know, is it a sales party? Is it a hang out and get drunk party? Is it a blogging party? Is it a uh, forum type party where you're expecting contributions or comments or participation? You need to tell them. So I would take um, some of this stuff, uh, mission statement, vision statement. You know, you don't need your archives so uh, prominent. Some of this daily info and blog, if you're going to spend the time to be a blogger, then I would put some blog posts out here. Let people know what you're about. And... Um, this, in terms of your mission, is good. It's focused on you, but how are you going to do that? I need some more specifics. So I think you've got a nice design sense here. The colors, there's a nice muted palette, uh, kind of fun fonts. You've got a good eye for uh, stock photos, uh, but it's time to take this to the next level and uh, build some sections in here uh, based around the hierarchy of things that you want a visitor to do. Uh, please take these actions and 
this is what I've got for you, and you want them to have the sense that when they've arrived, ah, this is the place for me. Uh, I don't think you need this search up here yet unless you've got something worth searching on. Uh, so far I don't see you uh, exhibiting a lot of content, so you probably uh, don't need that. Then my next set of questions, of course, would be about revenue strategies. How are you going to make money here? Uh, if it's advertising, well, then you need to build some ad space in, in a number of places here. That's fairly self-explanatory, self I'd say. Uh, if you're going to sell products, uh, which you are, you have a, a cart here, I guess, then those cart uh, products, here we go, way down here, product. Okay, so we have a uh, Penetrex relief formula here. Okay, well, if this is your main revenue source, this needs to be on the front page. Uh, big and bold and explain what it, why it's so wonderful and how to buy it. Um, it's not clear here at all that that's what this site is about. And whether that's your only product or a bunch of products, you need the products to be up here uh, and links to them probably on every page, uh, maybe down in the footer. Uh, so it's real clear what you want people to do and how they can pay you, Levon, <laughs> for whatever it is that you're offering here. All right. So I hope that's helpful to you. That's a, uh, a uh, quick uh, website review uh, just for you, and uh, we'll get back here to the rest of our questions. And if the rest of you would like a website review for yourself, um, you can uh, uh, – sorry here, somebody's trying to call me at the same time. Uh, I don't think we need to do that. Um, and uh, if you'd like a website review of your own, then expertwebsitereviews.com is the place to do it. Or if you join the Masterminds Forum at mastermindsforum.net, uh, we do those for the group. Uh, and people critique each other, which is a fantastic way to get feedback, not just from me, but from a bunch of other experienced, uh, friendly folks. And I uh, usually contribute a free video to those as well if somebody puts up their video uh, to be critiqued by the group. So there you go, Levon. I hope that was helpful to you, and good luck with resolveyourbackpain.com. Looks like you're off to a good start, a good niche with nice graphics, and I uh, hope that it makes you a ton of money. <laughs> I look forward to seeing more of you in the forum so that we can help you. Alrighty, so uh, let's see. Now, speaking of the forums, let's see. Let's just pop over to uh, clickmillionaires.com for a second. I know that uh, I keep talking about a forum, and it's a lot more comes to life a lot more when people can actually see it. So just as a quick uh, introduction here, um, this is the mat this is the clickmillionaires.com forum, and you can see um, these are a bunch of posts down the middle. There's a free book offer here right now. There's a uh, interview that I did recently with a podcast called the Boss Academy Sales Podcast that can give you tips on building your own lifestyle business. You can listen to that for free. Uh, over here, here are all the friendly po people that are members who are uh, posting and contributing. And then down the left side over here, we've got all kinds of different topics going on. Uh, what's your experience with 99 designs, Adam asks. Uh, Robert says, uh, glad to be here. Um, tips from Sheila, our good friend Sheila, on uh, how to use the forum and take advantage of it. Um, niche market openings. Chris is trying to figure out where the niche market opening is for him and his business. That's a great question. We do a lot of niche market identification. Uh, how to get reviews for your products. That's a challenge for a lot of people. How can you get that first reviewer to post something on Amazon.com or Google Reviews or rank you on uh, Yelp or TripAdvisor? Products for Review.com is a great service I launched recently, and that could be useful to you. We actually have free listings for uh, members for a limited time. Uh, new book from some of our members here. Somebody's looking for a cartoonist. Uh, testing domain names. How to get video production moving. Uh, soft sell versus hard sell. Now, that's always a good question. Uh, Zlata had a, a long discussion about this. Or about you know, is a long sales page good or a short one? Soft sell, hard sell. Um, all those sorts of things are useful and can be uh, discussed in a forum uh, in lots of helpful ways. All right, so that's a bit of the free forum there for you, and I'd love to have you come and join us if you'd like to, because uh, ClickMillionaires.com, well, I built it for you and people like you, and I think that uh, you could benefit from this. And even better, of course, is our Masterminds Forum. Uh, like I said, mastermindsforum.net, but I, I can't show you that one. <laughs> that's a private one, and there's a, there's a much smaller group of people. We work directly together, and we do video hangouts like this together every two weeks at least where we talk, uh, well, we get personal about the specifics of each person's business. And um, people have made a lot of progress. In fact, that book I just showed you, uh, Marketing Online Strategies by the Muscle Whites, by Muscle Whites Consulting, uh, that came out of uh, the Masterminds Forum and uh, one of our April challenges there. And they've got a new book out, right? So um, I should give them a plug, actually. Where is that book? Hang on. I think it's right. Uh, where did I put it? There it is. There you go. Here's a plug for their book. Congratulations, Charles and Linda. 
this is a, a great guide to marketing online strategies, as the, as the name suggests. And this is a direct result of their participation in our Masterminds Forum. Uh, and they even convinced me to write the forum, write, write, sorry, write the foreword. Um, and uh, I was surprised actually to be flipping through and so there's a picture of, of me and them having lunch <laughs> um, a couple years ago. Very nice. So congratulations to them on this book. And uh, that's the kind of results you can get for yourself if you join the Masterminds Forum as well. Help you get your uh, get yourself going. Uh, today's inspiring quote at the end of the show actually will be about getting yourself going, so stay tuned for that in a moment. Next, I want to talk about Google and their new mobile um, algorithm changes. it has been big news in the last few weeks that Google is going to be re-ranking everything based on mobile compliance. They're really uh, stepping up the value of mobile responsiveness in the calculations of their search engine results. In other words, if your site is old and it doesn't look great on a mobile device, it, that could significantly hurt your search engine rankings now. Now that's a problem because obviously the, the internet is, uh, well, we're about 20 years old now on the commercial internet and a lot of sites are just kind of dead wood out there. And even sites that do work, including some of mine, I'll be the first to admit it, need a redesign to adapt to these little screens and all the different sizes of screens that people have now with tablets and mobile devices. So if you have uh, not paid much attention to the mobile universe, now's the time. Because the search engine rules are changing and they're going to favor mobile sites heavily. That's all there is to it. Google doesn't usually telegraph or, just, or talk about their algorithm much, but they have actually come right out and said very clearly, um, I can quote this actually, this change will affect mobile searches in all languages worldwide and will have a significant impact in our search results. So that's a big deal. This came straight from the Google Webmaster Central blog and um, they are calling everybody out saying get on the mobile bus uh, or our search engine results may leave you out. So that's the bad news. <laughs> and of course we've been talking about this in the forum and you can join us as well if you'd like to talk about this. Um, but I do have some solace for you. <laughs> come on into the forum and there's actually a mobile section in our forum. So come to uh, clickmillionaires.com uh, and click on forum and then scroll down. There's a mobile section and in there there's a bunch of discussion including a link that it's too long for me to give you. A, I can show it to you here but <laughs> it's google.com slash webmasters slash tools slash mobile dash friendly and this is actually a free testing tool that Google's providing to see whether your site is mobile friendly this is huge not only are they admitting they're making a big change they're telling you what to do about it and they're giving you a free tool so you can test your site to see whether you need to be worried about it this is a big deal so I'll say it again but again you should go into the forum find the mobile section of the forum and you can find this link better but it's Google.com slash webmasters slash tools slash mobile dash friendly. So the free tool, you can put your URL in and it will actually rank your tool and give you suggestions on how you can improve the site. And this is way more hand-holding than Google usually offers. So it really suggests how important this is. So this is kind of like a public service announcement to you <laughs> to make sure that you're paying attention uh, and that you do follow up because uh, mobile is here to stay, obviously. Uh, and, uh, and, I, and I guess it isn't really just mobile per se, it's the fact that there are lots of different what they call form factors or aspect ratios, lots of different sizes of screens. For years everybody had a screen about this big and it might have been this big or this big but it was kind of all the same shape, right? And um, now screens are different sizes and often quite small or they're this way, you know, they're portrait or landscape um, and um, responsive is the idea that they need to the site needs to display well no matter what size or aspect ratio the screen is uh, that's being used. So it's to your benefit to optimize for this and if you don't, Google's going to spank you. <laughs> so um, I'm there with you. I feel your pain on this because I don't want to redesign all my sites either but it really is time and I uh, hope that's helpful to you and that free tool could make a real difference to you in terms of your long-term business. So there you go. Enough on that and I hope it's helpful to you. All right, so we've got, uh, let's see, one more question here from our friend Daniel. 
and then I've got a uh, happy quote for you. And if you lose us in the meantime, that means that you're probably listening to the podcast edition of this, which only runs 45 minutes. So if we lose you in the next couple minutes, it'll probably cut out right while I'm talking. But you can catch the podcast, at least three quarters of them. In fact, I have years of podcasts going all the way back to 2008. So if my podcasts are interesting to you um, or these videos are uh, useful to you, you can head over to um, – uh, scottfoxradio.com and download years and years of them and some of them are admittedly old with poor audio <laughs> I apologize for that uh, but it's not worth me retracing all that old information um, and there are nuggets of use in almost all of the uh, all of those episodes I would think especially if you're new to this and you like my books so check it out at uh, scottfoxradio.com or maybe it's clickmillionairesradio.com either way there's plenty of podcasts out there for you and I hope that they're useful to you and if we lose you in the next couple minutes uh, thanks for being here Okay, so next we're going to talk about uh, podcasts. Speaking of podcasts, that's a great segue, actually. Thank you, Daniel. We're going to talk about advertising on podcasts. Uh, podcasts are the idea that you can do a radio show, kind of like this one, uh, but it isn't gone once it's over. Live radio was traditionally uh, ephemeral, meaning that when it was over, it was gone forever. But these days, you can record everything really cheaply and save it to the cloud, so podcasts are now the way to do things. And you can actually get a lot more audience with a podcast. You can create your own show and do it live, like this, but also record it at the same time. And that means that people can listen to it uh, days, weeks, even years later, and that can continue to drive traffic, as my old archived podcasts do for me, and I recommend it to you, too. In fact, you know, before we get into the ad, Daniel wants to talk about advertising on podcasts, how to make money. We'll do that in a second. But I should just point out, my sec I think it's my second book, this one, e Rich is 2.0, there's a big uh, discussion about how you can have your own podcast. Um, maybe it was this one. I don't know. Sorry, I wrote enough. <laughs> These books are long enough. I forget which is which after a while. Either way, um, podcasting is a great publicity tool, and I recommend it to you guys. And um, there are some fantastic tools available. And this is, again, something we can talk about in the forum if you'd like to join us. So I recommend it, and I've uh, been doing it myself so uh, for years with great success, and I'd be happy to help you if you'd like to podcast as well. All right, so let's talk about Daniel's question um, about advertising on a podcast. So here it is. Hi, Scott. Uh, for an audio podcast, now he's making the distinction there, audio as opposed to video, because this show is both video and audio, uh, but this kind of applies to both, but he's talking specifically about an audio podcast. Do you know of any reputable advertising agencies where I can have them put ads on my podcast to make some money with it? Also, do you recommend doing this in tow with announcing one's own projects? A product, sorry. Uh, thank you kindly. Glad to be part of making it happen. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you, Daniel. So let's see. Um, so here's how advertising works. Nobody wants to advertise with you until you have a big audience. I know that nobody likes to hear that, <laughs> but there. So the answer is no. Um, there is no reputable advertising agency that wants to put ads in your podcast unless you have a significant audience. Um, and I'm sorry, Daniel, if you do, I'm just not aware of it. But I'm presuming you don't because I hadn't heard about it. Um, and until you get a certain level of big, nobody cares. Sorry. Uh, I do have some solutions, but that's not the way to do it, okay? Um, the Having a podcast is kind of like uh, being a band, right? A band wants to play big stadiums, but nobody wants to book you to play a stadium unless they know that they're going to sell it out, right? So um, you don't need to be U2 or the Beatles or some huge group. But you do need to get big enough that you know you're filling the local clubs and you're moving up to theaters and uh, there may be amphitheaters and that's when everybody wants to book you, right? It's kind of binary. You know, until you're big, you're not big, and then once you're big, everybody wants you. And I'm sorry, that's just kind of how show business goes, and that's what podcast is. So that's not to discourage you. There are other ways to skin this cat. I just don't think that advertising agencies are probably the way to go. Um, here's what you do instead. Uh, on a traditional website, actually, let me re recommend everybody. There's a video I did a few years ago on YouTube, uh, youtube.com slash Scott Fox and the number one, Scott Fox One. That's my channel. Um, search for four levels of advertising. It's called something like that anyway, or on scottfox.com, uh, where I talk about four levels of advertising. And these apply to websites particularly and also to podcasts pretty much to anything. Those four levels are uh, AdSense ads, affiliate ads, um, cust uh, your own product ads 
and then the custom sponsorships, and then, um, and the, sorry, <laughs> and then the and then the advertising of your own products. Okay, so that that is a hierarchy that applies to podcasts as well. So there is not really an AdSense equivalent for podcasts. There is not really a place yet, at least that I know of, and I'd love to be wrong about this, where you can go and get ads that will get automatically added to every podcast you make, and you'll make a few dollars every time the, somebody listens to the podcast because that ad was included. It's just a lot more complex to insert advertising slugs uh, into an audio podcast, and, and nobody's cracked that yet as far as I know. So what do you do instead? Well, there are some agencies, back to your question about agency, there is one uh, like called uh, Midroll, for example, uh, or you could Google for other ad networks. There are ad networks for podcasters. I didn't mean to say there weren't. It's just they don't usually care unless you have a certain amount of inventory and listenership, right? So if you um, want to Google around, I would look at Midroll and others. And if you have enough listeners that they're interested, fantastic. <laughs> I'm, I'm happy for it. Great. Not, you know, go do that. Um, although, of course, they're going to take a big cut for the pleasure of working with you, right? Um, so what do you do in between? Well, you do the other parts of the hierarchy I just talked about. You kind of skip over the AdSense bit, and you move towards affiliate ads and ads for your own products. Custom sponsorships are still ideal, um, but until you have a fair amount of audience, nobody is really going to waste, want to waste the time on you to negotiate and audit and track and pay on a custom sponsorship. But you can kind of fake it with affiliate ads. If you have a sponsor, you can call them a sponsor, as long as that doesn't violate the terms of their affiliate agreement anyway. Go to commissionjunction.com, go to linkshare.com or shareasale.com. Find products and services that you think apply to your audience, and then talk about them during your show. And take the URL that you use for that affiliate program that includes your tracking code and point people there. You can do this uh, on, from your own website. You can say things on your show like, Hey, please support the show and our sponsor, uh, Jim's Lawn Furniture, by coming to my site and clicking on the ad. And then when they come to your site and click on that ad and buy that lawn furniture, you'll get paid. Now, that's admittedly clunky, right? There's lots of leakage in that path, right? But that's kind of the state of the art as far as I know anyway. But that can get you something. And even better, of course, and more profitable, is to have your own products. Because then you can drive people towards your site. Your, pro your own products are probably going to fit in with the topics of your show, perhaps better than my lawn furniture example. And you can talk about them naturally during the show and then just say, hey, come to my website and sign up. And if you have ads for your own products on your website, presumably those ads are profitable for you because they're selling things that you made yourself, especially if it's digital products or memberships, ebooks, that kind of thing, uh, can be profitable. Or even if it's physical goods, hopefully you're making a profit on those too. And talking about those during your show is a way to support your podcast um, without having to get a third-party advertising agency involved who's going to take a cut and also probably have a, a very high bar for minimum listening audience as well. All right. So, uh, and then if all that starts working and you're making money from your own products and from affiliate ads, then you can naturally upstream the conversation for the, pro the companies that are uh, having a profitable experience with you as an affiliate. There's no reason you can't call Jim's Lawn Furniture and say, hey, Jim, you know what? I sold 100 of those last month. Uh, why don't you sponsor me directly? And we'll do a direct deal, and I won't do this affiliate thing anymore. And uh, Jim will usually be happy to hear from you because they're in the business to make money, right? And if you're driving traffic and, and creating new customers for them, they'll probably be happy to hear from you and do some sort of deal with you because the numbers will make sense for both sides. So that's the goal is um, kind of skip over the AdSense level uh, of advertising that would can work on a website but doesn't work so well on a podcast. Uh, skip over the ad agency approach unless you've got a lot of traffic and go more for your own products and affiliate ads and hopefully both of those do well for you and can even upstream into the custom sponsorships that were uh, your goal in the first place. <laughs> okay, so there we go. That's a, a, a couple minute uh, discussion of uh, podcast advertising and um, I hope that's helpful Daniel and anybody else is listening because it's a tricky area and uh, you know all, there are a lot of people out there that would love to see um, more advertising for their podcasts because there's a lot of great entertainment and information being shared in podcasts these days and I hope that that helps some of you make some more money. Uh, these tactics have worked for me as is everything else I talk about because I, uh, I invented the term click millionaire to describe myself and uh, I don't talk about stuff that I haven't done myself uh, and 
I uh, hope that that's helpful for you because it works. <laughs> okay. All right, so we're almost at the end of the show here. Usually I end up the hour with a uh, discussion of an inspiring quote. So today we're going to wrap up and we're going to talk about a quotation that I think is a powerful one for you. And it comes from someone you've heard of, um, probably, named uh, Napoleon Bonaparte. Of course, the uh, French uh, emperor and military political leader um, and a brilliant military strategist. And uh, uh, he was in the early 19th century. The world was very different from then, but he was truly a leader. And um, I'm not saying he was an all-around great guy, but he certainly was successful in his chosen field. So here's the quote of his that I want to share with you today, and then I'll tell you why I think it's relevant to your work online and in your life. Here's his quote, and this is translated from the French, I presume, but in English it says, Nothing is more difficult, and therefore more precious, than to be able to decide. Nothing is more difficult, and therefore more precious, than to be able to decide. Decide. That's the thing that stops so many people in pursuit of their own click millionaire business. And if this applies to you, let's talk about it for a second. Deciding is what you have to do. Analysis paralysis grips all of us, but as part of the Click Millionaire's philosophy, I recommend to you a bias toward action. I would rather see you have taken a wrong decision, maybe even made the wrong action, than to delay and delay uh, being paralyzed by the fear of failure. The costs of failure on the internet are, are really quite low. I mean, you can spend some time, sure, but, but you're not going to spend a lot of money. I mean, $100, $1,000 maybe. This may be a lot of money to you, but compared to the upside potential and the costs that it used to incur to start a real business, this is very low risk. So you need to just stop thinking and decide. You need to train yourself to be a decider and a moving forward type of person. Napoleon said, nothing's more difficult and therefore more precious than to be able to decide. Why is that? Because most people don't like to make decisions. They don't like the responsibility. But if you're going to be a click millionaire, the CEO of your own business and your own life, you need to learn to make the decisions. This advice applies as well today as it did 200 years ago when Napoleon was, uh, was literally almost king of the world. The cost of inaction is often much greater than the cost of the wrong action. Delay is an action, right? Delaying is making a decision to not move. And while you are not moving, others are moving around you and moving forward and passing you. And some of them may be stumbling and failing, but at least once you stumble and fail, you can pick yourself up and you've learned something and you can keep moving forward. If you don't decide, you don't move forward. And moving forward is the only way that you're going to be able to become a click millionaire. So I hope that's helpful to you. Nothing's more difficult and therefore more precious than your ability to decide. All right? So that's it for today from Scott Fox and Napoleon Bonaparte. I hope it's helpful to you. Um, come on over. Mastermindsforum.net is where I'd love to see you. Come and join us. That's the private forum, and we'll be happy to help you. Uh, you know, figure out your own business, your own plans. You don't have to have a website. You don't have to have a domain name. You can just be figuring this stuff out, and we'll help you. On the other hand, if you have a website, you have a domain name, maybe you have a business already, and you need to figure out how to position yourself better, how to develop new products, how to expand your business or your website, how to adapt to the changes in technology like mobile that we just talked about, how to use social media better. All these things are things that we talk about day and night, literally 24-7. That's the beauty of a forum that we talk about at mastermindsforum.net. And I'd love to see you. Come on over and join us. There's a great free trial, mastermindsforum.net. And I hope to see you there sometime soon. And in the meantime, have a great week and um, get out there. Let's make it happen. Thanks for joining me. I'll see you again soon, I hope.